Candidate Tom Tillis cleared the 40% threshold in the GOP's North Carolina Senate primary last night to become the party's nominee against incumbent Kay Hagan. So he went on Chuck Todd's show on MSNBC, and he proceeded to fumble the easiest question you've ever heard. A couple of Republicans, Rick Santorum on my show uh, earlier this week, Tim Pawlenty, former Minnesota governor, both uh, have questioned the Republican strategy of being against any raise of the minimum wage. Where are you on the minimum wage? I believe that minimum wage decisions need to be made by the state. That Barack Obama and Kay Hagan think that the minimum wage needs to be same, the same in the mountains of North Carolina and in the city of Boston makes no sense to me. It's a decision that needs to be made closest to the, uh, uh, with the people closest to the uh, situation. And I think that's state legislatures. Well, do you think it should be raised in North Carolina? Um, I think that that's a, a decision that the legislature needs to make the with businesses. Right, you're the speaker. Would you make right. that decision? Uh, right now, what we're trying to do is make the minimum wage. We, we've got a president, Kay Hagan, that want to create a minimum wage uh, economy. What I want to do is create jobs that make minimum wage irrelevant. All right, so you haven't really said whether you'd be for raising it or not. Well, Would you be for raising it in North Carolina? Well, Chuck, keep in mind, over the last five quarters, we've had the greatest drop in unemployment of any state in the nation. We're creating, we've created 200,000 jobs since January of 2011 when I became speaker. Instead of focusing on this sort of defeatist mentality where we've got to up the minimum wage, why don't we focus on creating better paying jobs? All right, Tom Tillis, I will leave it there. Sounds like you, you are for keeping it as is. That's a fair way to read this. I, I'm creating high paying jobs. All right. Oh, that was painful to watch. You are such an unsavvy politician. Look, even if you're against raising the minimum wage, which, of course, almost every elected Republican in the country is, you have to say you're for it. You have to pretend like you're for it. Even Rick Santorum figured this out. He's not in favor of a minimum wage increase. He never was. But now, all of a sudden, he's trying to rebrand himself as this populist, pro-blue-collar, pro-worker conservative. So now he's out there going, hey, man, I love raising the minimum wage. I want to raise the minimum wage. I'll lead the charge on that. That's what I'm in favor of. Now, if he were to ever get in a position of power, again, he would say, mm, not so much. But you have to at least pay lip service to the things that are overwhelmingly popular. I mean, 80% of the American people are in favor of raising the minimum wage. That's a majority of Democrats, a majority of independents, and yes, a majority of Republicans. In fact, I think they had up on the screen as he's talking that in his state, most people want to see a minimum wage increase. But he fumbles the easiest question ever. That's a softball right down the middle of the plate. And he's like, um, am I for a minimum wage increase? Well, I think that the states should make the minimum wage. Well, okay, so would you make it at the state level? I like job growth. But would you raise the minimum wage at the state level? I enjoy uh, the idea of economic uh, creation, and we should forget about the minimum wage and just create jobs that make the minimum wage irrelevant. Oh, just stop talking. When you make Chuck Todd look like a stellar journalist, that's how you know you're a terrible candidate. Because Chuck Todd does not ask hard questions. In fact, they're very easy and very vanilla, but even he's like, Dude, I asked if you're in favor of the... Why are you dodging the question and saying all these silly things? And also, can we just, you know, come to real life here for a second? Just, just think about what that talking point actually means when people say, No, no, I want to create higher wage jobs, so I'm against the minimum wage. But if you raise the minimum wage, you are making higher paying jobs and higher wage jobs. But he's saying, no, no, I mean, I want the minimum wage to be irrelevant and nobody to make that. I want everybody to make more than that. But we all know that's not fucking possible. Can we talk about things that are actually possible in the world that we live in? How about making the minimum wage a living wage? Let's start there. So when somebody says, well, just work really hard and don't make the minimum wage. And so let's take that idea and think about this a little bit. So let's say everybody in the country actually did that. They woke up tomorrow. And by the way, I don't think we're far off from that. I think the overwhelming majority of people do work really hard and try to get ahead in life and try to make a comfortable living for themselves or their families. But let's say everybody in the country did that. Everybody woke up and said, I'm going to work as hard as I can. I'm going to try to get that promotion. I'm going to try to do this, try to do that, climb that corporate ladder, uh, suck up to whoever I need to suck up to. What would happen if... if that was the case. 
there would still be minimum wage jobs. And you would still need people to do those minimum wage jobs. Not everybody could be the manager of the business. Not everybody could be the owner of the business. Not everybody could be the CEO. Not everybody could be a big shot. Some people, of course, need to be in upper management, in mid-management. A lot of people just need to be the workers. I mean, that's just the reality of the world that we live in. If everybody got the promotion, if everybody busted ass, well, who's going to uh, be the person to do the janitorial work? Who's going to be the person to be the cashier? Who's going to be the person to do any of the minimum wage jobs that we know are jobs that are necessary, that people have to do, or even the jobs that pay less than minimum wage, like home care workers, people who take care of senior citizens that have to, you know, wipe their ass and give them their meds and all that stuff. Uh, they make less than minimum wage. There's an exemption under law that was lobbied for by the industry. They make less than minimum wage in many cases. So the idea that everybody should work hard and not make minimum wage, but then you would be begging for the people to go back and do those minimum wage jobs because we need people to do those jobs. So then the reality becomes, and it, it, it's relatively obvious that when you look at the situation, you go, oh, I get it. So since people are always going to need to do those jobs that are low-wage jobs, the least we could do is pay them enough where they can survive. Nobody's saying that, you know, a minimum wage job, you should be able to have three mansions and two yachts and a Maserati and, uh, you know, a trophy wife or whatever. Nobody's saying that. All we're saying is just pay people enough money to live. Is that so much to ask for?